All right, YouTube. Hello. Thank you for watching. Today I got a, a couple uh, Hexa Star 250s. I'm kind of in a holding pattern here, so I thought I'd go ahead and uh, try something a little bit different. Thinking about seeing if I can squeeze a preamp in here that they use on the RM Italy. It's one I've used before. It works pretty well. Now, just going through this one, you know, I just kind of got to laugh because immediately I see there's a 4004 diode here. And, um, you know, I guess some people don't realize that a 4004 diode is not a small signal diode. Certainly doesn't have any of the characteristics um, that the small signal diodes do. So, kind of scratching my head on that one. There's also a 390 in here. My guess is somebody kludged that in there. This, according to the schematic, is supposed to be a 470, but my guess is, once again, somebody had their hands in this and changed that. So I was just kind of looking here to see what the best way would be to fit it in, because there is a little bit more to it. I was hoping that I could use some of these traces and have everything mounted pretty orderly, but I don't think that's going to happen here. So I think probably what I'm going to have to do is kind of like dead bug some of it together. Because the problem comes with the power feed. The power feed comes right down here and then branches off. And I need a 100 ohm resistor to feed the RM Italy circuit. So I can't break the connection in the back because... If there was enough space under the board, I could simply break it under here, put the 100 ohm resistor in, and then bypass around it and continue on with the power path. But there's not enough space underneath the, <clears throat> the stinking board to do that. Because uh, one of these 100 ohm, they're actually a quarter watt, but they're a 6 watt size, is exactly as tall as what the spacer is that goes under the board. So the only way to get power to it is going to actually be to set that resistor standing up. So that's going to kind of shift everything up into the air. So that's kind of why I say I'm going to have to dead bug some of it. Now I wanted to see if I could keep the ins and the outs the same going into the circuit here. This is the out there and this is the in there. But I don't know that that's going to happen. Uh, because the circuits are a little bit differently. I mean, we're looking at a PNP versus an NPN. So just kind of looking at this chicken scratch. Uh, this is RM Italy's preamp, and this is the uh, the Texas Star preamp. So there's a good bit to it. I think the best thing to do is just gut this shit out and um, go from there. So I'm going to get everything out of the board here and... Uh, see what uh, see what we can do all right so I got everything out here I stood up a hundred ohm quarter watt uh, right here at this connection point trying to get the best light that I can to show where it's at in case anybody wants to do this now looking at the BF199 transistor the pinout is uh, CEB from left to right so in order to dead bug this guy in there, it looks like the most logical position to set him in is going to be facing this direction. Like so. The center connection that's bent over and down into the board is going to be the emitter connection. So that's going to get soldered in there. And then there's going to be a resistor and a cap that's going to go from that emitter connection to ground which is going to come over here alright just caught a mistake here they can't be drilled through this is what I ran into before because we got crap underneath the board here so they're just going to have to get soldered down onto the top Either that or they could be moved to the other side and drilled through, but I mean it just really doesn't make sense to to drill holes over here because there's actually a ground ground path underneath there. So I'm just going to solder them down onto the top of the board. There's no sense, drill, no sense drilling holes in the board if you don't have to. Got them tacked on there. 470 uh, NPO there and a 100 ohm uh, quarter watt. It's actually the... Uh, 
smaller size quarter watt so it's more like a sixth so that takes care of two things it takes care of this it also takes care of that so um, that's what we got left everything else so next I'll do the 2.2 K coming off the base to ground I think the best place to get it would be to come right off of here and kind of dead bug it right down to the same ground connection point that we used for the emitter so come right off of there on the very first lead there and uh, strap it right straight down there I have another uh, small quarter watt which is the size of a sixth got that guy on there 2.2 K coming off the base tacked over here to ground at the same point the other ones were grounded at so that takes that much out of the equation so I think next I'll get this signal diode in and he is actually going to run the right direction there because right there is the input and right here is the input so if I bug him up on top here going across uh, horizontally coming off that base that will give me a straight down feed point for this 56 puff cap right into the input uh, where the existing input was on the board if you can kind of see my logic actually I didn't use a 4148 here for these for these signal diodes I actually used some diodes it's used in the front end of the uh, some of the older radios like the Navajos and stuff like that I mean but you can use 4148s I just used them because that's what I found first now I need a 56 right there which is going to come over and hit the input right there and these are NPOs so this guy's going to have to get stood up in the air So that takes care of that, takes care of that. So now we need that 12K resistor. And this is the part that I kind of hope was going to go all right because there's a, a lot of stuff happening right here off to this side and I didn't know how that was going to work. But it looks like it might work because uh, where all that stuff's got to tie is over here kind of in open air and everything looks like it's kind of flowing the right direction. Now I need a 12K. I got another uh, basically a sixth watt and then I got a true quarter just debating which is the best size to use because of spacing that 12k actually has to go back to the VCC point which is going to be right here so it needs to go from the anode of this diode and that cap back over to there so I think I could really use either but considering this quarter watt's a little bit longer than that smaller one, I think I'll just go ahead and use this. Alright, so the 12K is tacked across there, up to the VCC point right here. So that takes that out of the equation. Now we need to get a bypass capacitor in, even though there is one over here. But it's kind of a long story as to why I couldn't utilize the one that was in there. So I'm going to have to add another one. Yeah, I'm going to have to add another one at this point. From this point back over here to ground. I think I can squeeze that in there. Alright, so that is in. It's mounted upside down from the VCC connection right here. Back down to the same common ground path that I've been using all along. So that's out of the equation. So now all we're left with is this guy here and this guy here. So I think I'll do the output first, which is going to be right there. So there's a 150 NPO, and he is going to have to go from the collector. 
So he's going to have to go from here to the out. So that's a pretty big span there. And actually, there is nothing utilized on those on those three eyelets there on that path. That's completely floating and isolated since I put the transistor upside down. So let's just bend that collector down flat to the board. It's really hard to do this stuff with a camera setting in front of you because it mess at least it does me. It messes up my field vision and I don't have depth perception when there's a lot of things that are really, really close to me in my surroundings. So if it looks like I'm kind of stumbling around sometimes on things, it's it's because I am. It's because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. Um, you know, it's not because my eyes are bad, per se, anyway. So that'll kind of lighten up some of the span there. He doesn't have to jump too far to get to the out there. So just reform the leads on it a little bit. Kind of just taking a guess there. Might have overshot it. Yeah, I think I did. Because of the existing crimps that were in it. Sometimes you just don't know what kind of parts you're going to get. They have preformed leads or, or what the deal is, what you're actually going to receive. So you got to kind of make and modify accordingly. I didn't do a very good job of that. I'm just wondering, I think I'm going to put them on this side and there's a reason for that. I'm going to stick them in the very last hole and leave me an open, two open holes there. Not that that's going to help me on the next step, but you know, maybe. Now, I've said this before, doing this kind of stuff takes a lot of read-ahead comprehension, is what I call it. Because, um, if you're not kind of thinking ahead on multiple levels and dimensions, you know, like a, like a lady might, you know, you can get halfway through a circuit and realize, oh, shoot, man, um, this ain't going to happen because I just created a, <laughs> a layout paradox here. So you got to kind of look ahead. Sometimes that works for me, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so that is out of the equation. Now all we need is an RF choke and two stinking diodes. And this thing will be done. Unless I missed something here. There's a 10 micro Henry. Six to one, half a dozen the other. Could be a five percenter, but I'm almost guessing it's a 10 percenter. And then two more little signal diodes. All right, they are going to go between this point. That's why I left some holes open here. To, maybe that would help me in some way. Back to, yeah, it's not going to help me, I don't think. Back to VCC. Let me make sure I'm looking at this right. Yeah, they're going to, yeah, that's actually what be what would be considered the tank circuit if there was actually a, a C across there, but they have two clamping diodes instead of a, a capacitor, so it's not tuned. Yeah, so that goes back to VCC. So all we need is... Two parallel diodes uh, paralleled up with a RF choke, a 10 micro Henry, from this point right here, right straight back to there. Now you may be saying to yourself at this point in time, you know, that's great. You're going to have a super preamp in that thing, but what happens if that transistor ever goes bad? Well, you know, that would be a valid point. But, you know, I normally, uh, I don't know if I want to use the word normally... I have never uh, had anything that I've put together go bad. I mean, at least not when it was used in my presence. So, um, you know, I'm not overly concerned about the day that, you know, I have to get that transistor out of there. And most of the times when I do stuff, you know, I do it for myself, you know. I might not necessarily do this if I were, you know, building something and, and having it go to somebody else. Yeah, so that's why I do the things that I do. I'm sure that BF-199 is going to last a lifetime in there. So the RF choke is in. Back up here to VCC, right down on to the um, collector. Now all I have to do is get these two clamping diodes across that whole entourage. 
tried to make the bottom of it a little bit long to get enough height to stand it up. not super pretty and looks like it was super made to be there but you know what these things really work great all right didn't do anything dumbass diodes are back to back I'd say that's it solder this one down a little bit better there we are an RM Italy preamp on a Texas Star 250 she is all done It shined it up a little bit. Shiny as a new penny. So, right, I appreciate you watching my video very much today. I got a bunch more stuff to do to this, but uh, clean everything up and uh, start a different project here. So I appreciate you watching very much. Like I said, uh, have a great day.